All right, guys, this is the second video of the Golang Fiber Postgres uh, project. Now, obviously, you need Postgres to be installed on your machine. I'll leave a link to the DigitalOcean uh, article for installing Postgres in the description uh, for this video. So in case you don't have it installed, we haven't reached the part where we'll start connecting our uh, Golang with Postgres. But just as a note, if you don't have Postgres installed, you need it. Uh, and I'll send I'll put the link of the article in the description box okay now the second question somebody was asking me uh, in comments yesterday so it's good that i was uh, that i didn't upload this video in just one go and i upload i'm uploading it uh, you know in in parts so somebody asked me uh, you know that they use php my admin to work with mysql what interface am i using to work with postgres so i'm not using any interface i'm just using the psql uh, command line cli that postgres gives you that's uh, what you can use to create your um, uh, your table or whatever okay uh, now coming back to Postgres uh, to, the, to the project sorry so coming back to the project now we have created all these routes and these functions are not there so that's why we're getting these squiggly lines out here so we'll start creating these functions quickly so we'll come up here for the create book function so we'll say func create book now it's important to know that it's not just a function Create book is going to be a, a struct method. So you can say uh, R and repository. Repository is the struct that you have defined here, which basically is going to help you talk to the database. And uh, R is the initialized repository that we have created out here. So all of these struct methods will have access to R, which is our repository. And it takes in context, which is basically fiber.ctx. And this function is going to return errors. So you will create a variable called book. Which is of type book, which is book is a struct out here. And we'll use context dot body parser. So what's happening out here? What's context.bodypasser doing? Now, if you were using HTTP, let's say you're not using Fiber, you're using HTTP, you would have uh, gotten access to the request, right? So you get access to W and R with HTTP package. So where R is the request. Now, Fiber is a level of abstraction. In the back background, it's obviously working with your response and your request only. And with the help of context, which Fiber.context provides you, you get access to uh, the body. And then you'll use a uh, body parser to convert whatever JSON that you're getting into book format. Now, like I said, Golang does not understand JSON on its own, right? So we have defined how the JSON is going to look like. And we have also defined the struct that Golang understands. Now we need a way to decode the JSON information into the struct that Golang understands. You can do that using the JSON encoding package, but you don't need to do it here because Fiber already has uh, the ability to do that for you. So it gives you a level of abstraction and people do get confused here. This is why I explained this. A lot of you would already be knowing this and I don't have to explain it, but for people who don't know this and who will get confused out here. So I thought I'd just point it out that, you know, this is what Fiber is doing. So we use all these frameworks like Fiber and Gen and we think that they're doing a lot of magic, but they're not doing a lot of magic. They're basically a level of abstraction over uh, things that you would have to do manually on your own anyways. So if error is not equal to nil, you will have context or status http dot status unprocessable uh, entity dot json here in the json I'll pass fiber dot map message request failed and you want to return the error so again you're using fiber and you're using the map function to basically send a json request right and this uh, name of the error is wrong now it's giving you a squiggly line here because obviously we don't have uh, the HTTP package so you can do that here you can say next slash HTTP all right so that issue has now gone away okay 
so um, what you'll do now is so now we'll obviously add it to the database um, I'll come here okay and you'll say R which is your repository right R is your repository it has DB so I want to access that DB so I'll say R dot DB dot create function and ampersand book dot L okay and here what we'll say is we'll capture this in a variable in an error variable we'll capture the error out here and we can handle the error so we'll say if error is not a good name context dot status http dot status bad request okay and the json you're going to say um, could not create the book right because this is uh, you trying to create a book using the database and if you are not able to do it you want to send an error saying that you were not able to could not create book okay and this bracket ends here from here you'll return error and out here you'll say context.status http.status okay so if everything goes well there are no errors right we want to send a 200 error message uh, so not error message 200 status so here we'll say fiber.map and message is going to be that book has been I'll take it on the next line actually uh, it'll just look much neater so I'll say book has uh, been add it okay that's perfect now what you'll do here is you'll uh, return return nil why because we're supposed to be returning an error make sense it's supposed to be returning an error and if everything has gone well you will return nil on this function now comes the next function which is uh, get books Guys, I'm a little pressed on time, okay? So, I'm going to be able to just finish this next function, which is get books quickly. So, we'll say get books context star fiber dot. Now, a lot of people ask me why I cannot make longer videos. It's because, guys, I upload videos every day, every day, single day. So it's like a schedule, right? That I schedule, I uh, you know create videos every day. But I have to, I run my own software companies, so I'm uh, unable to provide more time than this. I try, I try to do better, but this is the max that I'm able to pull out. But it's you know good to get something out rather than you know posting nothing. So that's why I do this. So I I stay in touch with uh, the technologies myself. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're creating a variable called book models. And it's uh, a slice of type models on book. Now, uh, this is something that we have not worked on right now. It's going to be in our models package. So don't get confused with this as of now. Okay. What you need to be understanding is that we're still using our repository, uh, using the database inside the repository to find all the books. So db.find. Okay. Here we're saying book models dot error and we can now handle this error so we'll say if error is not equal to nil we're going to say context dot status http dot status bad request dot json oops so this is why i hate using extensions but you know for, i use extensions for all the viewers so that's it's uh, you know easier for you to uh, understand i guess i mean a lot of people have asked me to use extensions that's why i use it otherwise earlier i never used to use extensions so could not get the books okay so if there uh, is an error you want to say could not get the books and you want to um, after this line you want to return the error because the get books function also returns an error right so if there's an error you'll return an error while finding books but if everything went well you want to say context.status 
obviously you want to say HTTP dot status okay dot JSON and inside JSON you have basically a fiber dot map and here you will have a message books um, fetched successfully yes and then you will have your data which should be equal to this and at the end you want to turn it perfect so what you're doing here is we have created a variable called book models and we that's what we want to find book models and book models is of type model sort books we haven't created our models package yet that's why it's giving us a squiggly line and we'll have to create the package we'll have to import models package and then we'll have to obviously have something called this books as a struct there but here what we're doing is we're creating a slice of structs we want to uh, be able to basically uh, send that those books as data in um, as json right as response from this api so this is why we had to create this variable because that's what we want to send right book models it's basically a collection or a list of all the books there in your database and you'll use repository database dot find and you'll find book models there's an error we'll handle the error if everything went well you'll say simply say 200 and you'll return the book models and you'll send a message saying books fetched successfully now in the next video we'll work on our get book by id function we'll work on our delete book function these two functions are remaining and then we'll also quickly take care of our storage and models pretty straightforward in the next video i think we'll be done with this uh, little project right so uh, just wanted to create this project to show you how to work with postgres with uh, golang and a uh, few people have commented that they also want to see how pg go package works with postgres fair enough i'll i'll create a video on that and a few uh, and one person has also commented that they'd like to see sqlc or sql boiler with this Fair enough, I can show you that also, not a problem. Uh, we'll work with SQL Pointer. The only thing is that they um, get such a big layer of abstraction on your project that you don't understand where the problems happen. So this is why the first thing that I uh, recommend learning is something like this, where you have to do a lot of uh, work on your own with GORM. And then we'll work with uh, something like SQL Boiler, which kind of takes away all the work away from you. It does it gives you a lot of abstraction. It's very easy to learn. but it's something that uh, you should not start with as a, a developer who's starting out using Postgres for the first time with Golang. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to this channel. I hope you're liking it. Uh, I put out awesome value every single day. Um, there are more than 100 Golang videos on this channel. Go to the playlists, check out all the different playlists and uh, start working and start learning basically. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.